There is no such thing as a good solo with bad rhythm. And so in this video, I'm going to show you a very specific trick that you can use to practice playing better rhythms in your solos. So here we go. To play a great rhythm in your solos, you have to consider the following elements to the rhythms that you're playing. Number one, variety. Number two, definition. And number three, syncopation. Variety, definition, and syncopation. What does variety mean? Well, variety means not playing the same rhythm all the time, every bar. Definition means how clearly you are able to play the rhythms. Can I clearly tell that you're playing swing eighths or straight eighths? or triplets, or double time, or is your eighth note coming out on the end of one, or is it on the downbeat? This is definition. Syncopation has to do with accenting the offbeats as it is strictly defined. So here are the actions that you need to take to get better at your rhythm. First up is to learn a four bar rhythmic phrase. This four bar rhythmic phrase uses all of the elements that I mentioned before. It has variety, it is clearly defined with different rhythms, and it has syncopation built right in. The first step is to simply take a scale, in this case I'm gonna use a C minor pentatonic, and just play the rhythm, not really caring which notes I hit. I'm just gonna kind of skip around on the scale and stick to the rhythm. So now we're going to start turning this four bar phrase into an eight bar phrase. And a very simple way to do that is to play it once and make sure that no matter where you are in the fourth bar, the last note will always be the fifth. So in this case, we're in the key of C minor. So I'm going to end the phrase on a G like this. Then, after you've played that phrase, I'm going to play the phrase again. However, I'm going to cut off the fourth bar and end it at the last note of the third bar. And this time, I'm going to end it on the root. So at the end of bar four, we end on the dominant, the fifth. And at the end of bar seven, we end on the root. And then bar eight is a rest. That rest is there for a purpose and it serves as punctuation. Think about when you listen to a great speaker talk. They have a natural rhythm and flow to their speech and those pauses at the end of each sentence give the listener time to process what they just heard and then get ready for the next phrase. So now that we've turned the four bar phrase into an eight bar phrase, we're gonna turn it into a 16 bar phrase. However, the structure is gonna be A, A, B, A, four bars each. So we'll do the same exact thing rhythmically that we did in measures one through eight. Measure four will end on the dominant. Measure seven will end on the tonic. Measure eight will be a rest. Then measures nine through 12, I'm just gonna take one of the measures from our original four bar phrase and repeat it four times. Not only the rhythm, but whatever notes I play, I'm also going to repeat. So it's gonna be four measures repeating the exact same melody, rhythm and notes. Then for measures 13 through 16, I'm going to basically play the same structure that I played in measures five through eight. So overall, we will have a 16 measure phrase with an underlying AABA structure, plus some inherent tension and release with the tonic and the dominant resolutions. <laughs> 